Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the garage. We're looking at a, a, another EV car charger. This is a more universal car charger. This is from Mi Gear. It's the Pika Series 40 amp. Even it can be mobile, and I want to show you guys this charger. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to install this and use it on my Tesla Model Y behind me. This is a 2022 Tesla Model Y long range. And this can be used not only for Teslas, but almost every other electric vehicle out there because it has the J1772 universal plug. Now with Tesla, my car came with a, an adapter. So this, this adapter here allows me to go from, uh, use the J1772 plug, to the Tesla adapter and I can adapt right into that. So that's all you need with the Tesla. It doesn't come with this, but usually your car does. If not, you can you can grab one, you can put these up on their website. So a uh, big shout out to Mi Gear. They're, they're the, they partnered with the channel on this video. So we wanna go through this and just kinda show you the features of this, how it works, how the charging works, and uh, what's included in this package. I really like the fact this comes with a nice little uh, padded case for this to be taken in. So this is really can be meant for mobile charging. Like you can keep this in your car and in case you need to charge somewhere, you've got access, you've got access to this. Now, if we get this out here, the, the cord on this has got a, is a really thick cord. And so it's got, it really feels very heavy duty. So we get this out of the case here. It's got a nice uh, Velcro strap around the cord that we can take that out. Now the plug, it plugs into, you don't have to hardwire this one. This one plugs right into a NEMA 1450 outlet. So this is the kind of a universal type of a plug. This is like what a dry, your dryer outlet runs on. So when you get your electric car, you can just have your electrician wire a, 14, a NEMA 1450 or a dryer outlet plug. And we have 19 feet of charger cord length here. So you can see here we have just a little small screen here. We can select the amperage. Now this runs on 40 amps is the maximum amperage, which is actually perfect for my situation because my NEMA 1450 plug I have wired in my garage for charging is a 50 amp breaker. And usually you don't want to do more than 80% of the capacity of the breaker. So if I have a 50 amp breaker, I don't want to charge constantly at more than 40 amps because I want to keep that uh, around 80% or less. So I'm not overloading the circuit or tripping the breaker. So that's perfect for this. So 40 amps, that should charge the car at 20 to 25, maybe even up to 30 miles per hour of range back into the battery. I really like how this works. It's got a nice little button here, very easy to press. It releases the nice rubber cap to this and it's connected. So that way it'll just stay right on here. And it actually stays on with the clip. So the clip will actually hold on the rubber plug holder there. Now with a Tesla, adapter just clips right on and now you can charge a Tesla with that. So that's really simple. There's not much for installation. All we have to do is really plug it in. There's a couple things we can mount here. This is a mounting sleeve where this portion would slide into and it will hold it up on the wall. And then we have a little hook and a plug connector that uh, this can just clip into that when it's on the wall like that. And then we can uh, hang our cord around this little uh, J hook there. This is where I proc my Model Y and then I have this outlet. Uh, I had an electrician install that there. This is the NEMA 1450 plug here. The car is normally further up here in the garage. I just have it pulled back so I can get access to my plug here and get this installed. The unit's gonna be plugged in right here. I wanna have the uh, this main part kind of, uh, I, I wanna put it about right there. So here's the main unit on the back of it. It has some nice information. It, it'll give us the uh, LED display information. So what the LEDs mean, if there's any errors, we can see exactly what that means. I had to reposition this a little bit closer to the plug. I could, you could go further down because the, the cord comes out of, the, out of the top of it. So this sits in like this, it sits in like that and the cord comes out of the top of it. So it's kind of, it's going to bend a little bit odd. So like that. Now I could have it to where it, it hangs down here, like right below here, but I don't want it this low and I don't really want to screw into this metal, uh, this concrete foundation here. So we got it on here. I want to, let's find a spot to coil up the cord. I'm going to put it right here for right now, just because it's, uh, I want it a little bit, I want it a little bit further down the wall from that, just so it's a little bit closer to the back end of the car. Cause that's really where we're going to be using it. Okay. So there we go. We have that there. We have 19 feet, so I have plenty of room. I have, even though this is a very thick cable, it, it does, seems like it winds up pretty good. Probably two loops like that, and that can stick in like that. Let's take a look at the screen here and the options we have. Pretty simple operation. 
So you see, we can we can select the, where it says clock here. We can act, we can set a time limit. So if we only only want to charge for an hour or two hours, we can set the time there. So there's 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 two hours there. The Tesla is you don't I don't really need that feature. I can you know set I can set all that on the car if I need to do that. But if other cars need to have that, uh, you you can do that as well. So let's take it down to zero. So we don't need to set any kind of time limit. But if we go to select, it goes up to the amperage. So see, it's at 12 amps right now. 12 options were 12, 24, 32, all up to 40 amps. So 40 amps would be the max that this can draw from the from the breaker from the uh, power source. And really, that's that's where I want it, where I'd want it to charge. We can also see we can see the voltage there. It's slow. It's 250. It's a 240 volt. It's also telling our temperature, both Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then we have a charging indicator. The light here is kind of our indicator light. So the charger cord is plugged in. We've got the green screen. We're ready to go. We're at 40 amps, and I have my. So the J1772 plug adapter to Tesla is now plugged in here. So with that on, I'm not going to be able to plug it into here to keep it right there so it'll just be hanging kind of over this little hook here I wish this hook was a little bit larger to accommodate a little more a uh, little more cable but it seems to be working just fine come over to the car here and uh, this is so the model Y is ready to accept the charge with the white light there plugged in it's blues communicating and green flashing is charging it does have a lot of information on a little screen there I like that uh, blue flashing is for this one is charging. Go into the car and see what kind of output we're getting. So in here on the Model Y, I can, I'm on the charging screen. If I go here, I can set my, I can reduce the amperage down, but it knows that the maximum that the charger cord is allowing is 40 amps. So that's the max I can go. I can go, I can throttle it down if I want to. And then up here on the top left, it's going to show me my miles per hour, meaning uh, how many miles of range are going back into the battery. 33, I'm, that's actually pretty good for a 40 amp, uh, amp service. I've got one mile this charging session, 240 volts, and I have my maximum charge limit set to, actually it's all the way full, so, so it seems to be charging really well, and uh, 33 miles in an hour is not, not bad at 40 amps. When this is plugged into the car, the Tesla T is going to flash green, and then when I want to remove it, what can happen is if you push down the button and you re just remove this whole thing, it'll leave the adapter in there. So what I want to do is I can just hold down the button. It'll lift up, it'll lift up the lever here and release the adapter, but, so it'll stop charging. But if I put the adapter back down, I can, pull the, I can pull the whole thing out, and that way the adapter is not left in there. Sometimes you'll leave the adapter in there, and the lid will close down on the adapter, and you've got to like lift it back up manually. So just you just push the button once to stop the charge. See how it lifts up the clip, but we want the clip to go back down so that way you can pull out the adapter without leaving it inside the Tesla. Well, this charger is working great. Guys, I like this one because it's mobile. Like I can unplug this, I can take it with me. It's got a carrying case. I'm also preparing, I have two Teslas in my garage right now. This is my Model Y that I'm charging and I'll probably use this to charge it for uh, the, you know, the, the foreseeable future. But one thing I'm preparing for is I have a, a Lucid Air Pure on order. And it's I, I just got some emails recently from Lucid saying, hey, we need to confirm all your information. Let's get all your registration, your insurance, everything arranged because I could be getting delivery here this year sometime, 2023. So I'm preparing for that. I need to have some kind of a charging system for that. Lucid charges almost $1,200 for their home level two charging system. I'm not going to pay $1,200. These aftermarket third parties like MeGear, they have uh, great great charging options. For a lot less, for a lot less money than that, and it w would be a great solution for that. I not only do I have the Lucid Air, Air Pure coming, but I also am. Cons I also have a reservation for the Hummer EV SUV. Uh, not really sure exactly time frame on that, but it's nice to have a universal charger. So this is the, even though this isn't Tesla specific, it is a universal electric car charging option, and it's portable and it's mobile, and I can take it with me. So I like that option. Tesla really is the one that's kind of set the standard. They've kind of set the standard where we're not going to include this kind of stuff in the in the car. You have to pay extra. If you want Tesla's version of this, you got to pay extra for that at the time of, of getting it. If you want the 1450 plug, it's an extra 30 or 40 dollars. Uh, this unit here through Tesla is probably like 230, 240 dollars. Uh, it, it, it's changed in price, but it used to be included. And I could see, you know, as companies are trying to, you know, get get better profit margins, and they're going to follow suit. 
all, all of the companies now are requiring you to buy their, their, their charging system to put in your home and to even to put in the car to, to, to charge on the road. So now you don't need this if you're, char like if you're fast charging, like at a DC fast charger, for example. But, but if you're traveling, you're going to family's house, you know, you're going to be staying on vacation, you're going somewhere. It's good to have a charger in there just in case you need to charge at a, a, at a, a place that you, where you, you don't have fast charging. Level 2 charging, this is meant to be charged overnight at your home. You know, kind of, as you can see, I was getting about 33 miles of range per hour in this car. So overnight, this is, this is going to be, that's more than enough time overnight to charge this, this uh, battery fully up. 300, about 315 miles is what the range is on my Model Y. So, you know, you know, 7 to 10 hours, we're good to go, and it's, uh, it's all charged up. So I like this option. I really like the screen. It looks like a really robust system. I like the, the thickness of the cables. There's no installation. That's the cool thing with these things. There's no installation. Really, you just put the holder up here, and then the plug holder, if you want to put that up, you can as well. So I don't have to install anything. I've already got my NEMA 1450 plug installed. So if you're looking at an at a, at a electric car, make sure you get your, your NEMA 1450 because a lot of these chargers, like this Mi Gear charger, is going to hook into this 1450, and that's going to give you pretty good speeds at home. It, these are about as fast as speed you get. You can get some of these that are a little bit higher amperage, but 40 amp is good because this is wired to a 50 amp breaker. And that was what my electrician installed when they installed this plug, and I'm charging at 40 amps. So uh, I don't really want to charge at 50 amps because I don't want to trip the breaker. So you want to charge about 80% of your, of your rated breaker speed. So anyways, guys, that's kind of uh, the, the test of this Mi Gear uh, mobile charging unit, J1772 plug. I'm impressed with it. I like the look of it. I think it's going to work great for my Teslas, but it's also going to work great for other EV cars as well. Anyways, guys, leave your comments down below. See the link to this in the description below. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.